All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how to get familiar with a new code base. Either you've started a new job and you want to get familiar with it, or you're going to work on an open source project and you want to get familiar with it. Or maybe you just want to know how something was built, how something went from hello world to being a very popular package that's out there that a lot of people use. The example I'm going to use today is Delta. And what this does is allows you to view the diff output from Git. And you get this automatically with Git, but this gives you a prettier output, gives you some better ways to navigate and a lot of other features. But this is not a video about Delta. I'm just going to use Delta as an example but I do recommend that you go out and check out Delta's features. They're awesome. But again, you can do the same thing with whatever viewer you have set up to view diffs with Git now, but you should check this out. When a new code base enters your life for work, open source, or because you just want to see how a very popular tool came about, you can just go out to GitHub and look at master and just go through the code and that's fine that tells you what they have now and you can learn from that but an even better way to do this whether it's work or open source or you're just trying to learn a new language or learn about software design is to go through the history and see how it all came together from the very beginning when they first did their first init commit to where it is today, or maybe at least up to where the first release was. Now, you can get to the first commit through the GitHub UI by going up to Insights and finding an old commit and clicking in and digging through. And you can also try to make your way through, if they even have them, through the different tags and grab that. Since you're really going to want to understand this, it's good to bring it down locally and have it ready so that you can actually get through the code. I've already cloned Delta here. And so what I want to do is I want to log out the Git history in reverse so that it starts with the very first commit that I ever had. Now I am using Delta as my viewer, but the same concepts apply to whether you're using default built in or whether you use something like Delta, which is very simple to set up and you should definitely check that out. Okay, so you can see here that this first commit doesn't have anything in it, okay? But you can see that the commit here that Dan Davison did was the Cargo New Delta, and this is a Rust project, as you can tell from Cargo. And if you go down here, you can see that Cargo itself created the git ignore and the cargo toml. If you didn't know that, that's okay. But this is just what you get just by running cargo new and they ran Delta, as you can see. So that's all there is. Now we can take a look at this up in GitHub. If we just say commit and, and you'll see here, same thing as we have down here. Same stuff. There's Bane with hello world. The nice thing about having Delta here is I just keep going on to the next commit and I can see that what Dan Davison did was remove the hello world and started bringing in the different pieces from the standard library that they needed, standard in, right, standard out, and got rid of hello world. And that's all they did and kind of just added a little starter stuff here. So great, so you see how that came in. All right, well, the next thing they wanted to do was parse diff on standard in. Okay, well, that's pretty important. Well, you can see then, all right, well, they brought in unidiff. All right, so you can see here that they're using the extern syntax and bringing in unidiff. And you can see that this stuff was removed and this stuff's here now, just the same as we did before. If I go here, and I switch out my commit up here. You can see, same thing here, adding unidiff. 
and updating this code. So you can see this stuff was removed and this stuff's here. So it all matches. So you can either do this in GitHub by finding each commit. You know, if you were to go here, and like I said before, you can go into insights here and go to contributors. There's a few different ways to do this and try to get like that there. And uh, 68 commits. Okay, I probably could have made that smaller. And go older. I'm sure there's a faster way. Okay, yeah, here. So if you started on cargo new delta, you can see this is what we saw before. And then you want to see the diff from that. You go up here, and now you see. So same thing, and then you can just keep going back like this and go up. All right, and then if you're not using Delta, all you need to do to get this same diff here, if you wanted this, was you want to get the parent commit, right? And this particular commit, and whether you get that from running a reverse git log or whatever you want to do, you can also just say git diff and then what you'll do is we'll put the parent in and that was what what four four zero four c one seven and then the child and you can see that that's what we get that same diff and of course my viewer is still delta but this would come up just the same using the default built-in stuff so if we just go back here to my nice git log reverse here and we can go along and you can just kind of follow along quickly and see what's happened one good way to do this is take the time to get your code editor out and write this from the beginning so just follow along with the history here start off and you know get your main and kick it off with you know cargo new you know up here at the top so we just you know start from the beginning here and work our way through and whenever there are changes make the changes type them out go through read the commit messages make the changes to the code you know make the same commits you know in your local git repository and go through okay you can see here ah okay now dan davison wanted to simplify diff parsing so they added in this parse patch and you know back at the time that they did this they're on different versions but you probably just want to follow along with the same versions they used and go through and say you're doing this with rust and rust analyzers on there it may say hey you know if you have say 2018 idiom set up it may yell at you for things that are are older but you can ignore that or set that to be quiet and for the most part though you should be fine using whatever versions they have here so this now they're using ATTY or Addy I'm not sure what that's actually called and they add it in right here and you just carry on and basically you write the application from the beginning going through each of these pieces this is the best way to get familiar because now you're going to be familiar with the history the code decisions that were made refactoring and then how it all came together and then how it ultimately went from being hello world to when you get way further they started adding their ci cd on and how they're building out different binaries for different platforms and all that's going to come together so how it went from nothing to being this very popular tool that people use all the time and it's set up you know professionally this is a top-notch open source project right here same thing would go if you are doing this for your new job look to see how things were built and put together and you can get a sense of the decisions that were made why refactors happened uh, maybe some kind of language feature came out uh, so you can see here there's to do handle none 
right here and then they got rid of that by using the question mark operator you see and you can if you don't know what that means and you're learning rust well you can go figure out well hmm okay there's unwrap and now there's a question mark why did that happen so this can help you learn a language learn a code base and also learn how top-notch software gets made how it's built so instead of doing you know a tutorial on a to-do list for the zillionth time although to be fair i might do that and make an actual to-do list application and record it but uh, mine won't mine will be awesome so it won't be the same thing but you can go through and see this okay well now they needed this and this is all now we don't know what was going on behind the scenes as far as how some decisions were made we just kind of see what ultimately happens but this gives us uh you know and uh dan davison here really is great about you know don't panic unnecessarily oh, okay cool so we get a really good sense here and if you look at the top notch projects out there you'll get a sense just from these commit messages and what they did and what they changed and you can just you know plow through here and learn the language learn the code base and then start learning how things come together as far as how you get binaries out and how you set up github actions and good readme files and how things get upgraded and and how releases are set up and you just can get all the way through this and do all this and it's really nice you can do this again with git you can also just go through this piece by piece by going through the github ui and you can set these up to be you know unified so you can see things together and you might like that view better however you like it the idea here is is that as you go through the history you'll see how it was made not just what the end result is by going through the master branch so another good tip is to go in and write tests against the code even if tests already exist just write your own tests that really gets you into it and gets you familiar with things but going through the history seeing how it was made and if you are trying to learn say rust or hey just how does you know building a cool git tool work or say you did this with rip grep or something you want to understand how does someone go about building you know a grepper well you could also walk through rip grep which also has a very nice history like this that you can go through go through the history see how it's built and build it up go 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 until you've made it through until you're caught up with now and you will be super familiar and as you go through look at things and try to understand things so this is just a great way to go through and learn i hope this is helpful it's one of those nice things that is good to know and it does take some time to go through a code base like that but when you're done doing this you will be as up to speed as any of the other developers on the team and you'll be ready to go or if you go through something like delta or rip grip something like that you'll be familiar with git tooling or you'll be familiar with grepping you'll also be quite familiar with the rust language if you were doing this anyway i hope this is helpful for some people out there i appreciate you watching please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time